video we're gonna build a chat gbt4 trading bot that actually works so you can see it's already been building it for me and you know why it's always going to work to build trading bots especially with chat gbt is because you get to remove your emotions out of trading and emotions are the reason probably i mean at least for me those that was the reason i would lose trades it's because you would try to buy you would chase a buy or you would try to you'd sell when it's going down. For example, you see these big green bars and you wanna buy right here, like this green line, and then what happens? Well, boom, over the next eight, 10 hours, it goes down. But in reality, you should be buying when after it's going down, all right? I don't wanna recommend anything, but if you are gonna buy, it'd be better instead of buying here, buy here. But that's hard to do emotionally. But robots don't have emotions. So with ChatGPT and GPT-4, we're gonna build a trading bot that actually works. So we've already been building it, as you can see here. You can see it's coded all this for me. If this looks like gibberish to you, that it's probably because you don't know how to code, but I wanna encourage you that, like I'm just a regular dude too. Like, it's not hard to code. It's just, a, there's a learning curve. You just have to learn how to do it. But the cool thing is, is like, ChatGPT can teach you exactly how to do things. So it just shows you what to do. And then any questions you have, you just ask it. Also, I'm doing a giveaway for 500 bucks, 500 USDC here on April 4th. And you can access to that by just subscribing and commenting below. So you'll get a chance to win 500 USDC. I'm also going to give away access to my bootcamp. So a couple of runners up. Maybe there'll be one winner of the 500 and then a couple runners up. We can get access to my bootcamp where I give seven different algorithms and I actually teach you step by step how to algo trade. In these videos, I'm actually doing stuff that I need to do on my daily day to day. So, yeah, you can kind of see like the true the true things I'm building. So let's go ahead and first let's just get back into it. And let's say this. We have two symbols. <clears throat> The symbol formatting, formatting for Femex is like this, BTC, uh, ETH, USD. And the formatting for DYDX is like this, ETH, USD. Please make a function that automatically, automatically sets, uh, uh, formats the symbols correctly for each exchange so we can use them in the future. The input to the function will simply be the base, the base symbol, like ETH. Let's go ahead and see if it can make that. It's pretty impressive that it can build pretty much anything. So let's go ahead and see if it creates this for us because we're gonna be using two exchanges. The only way to make an algorithm that actually works is you have to do some sort of arbitrage. So we're gonna do that. And let's just say the base symbol is this, base, symbol equals ETH, ETH. If exchange.lower equals Femex, return base plus quote. Okay, interesting. If exchange dot, so exchange one, exchange two, formatted symbol, base symbol, format symbol. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's a cool implementation of this. I'm gonna go back to the old way because let's think about this for a second. If I have UBTC, BTC, USD, let's just do it the regular way for now. I'm gonna ignore this. Let's keep it moving. Let's go ahead and buy 
build a function we actually already did that down here you can see while true get current time and with that current time we want to buy at 57 minutes and then sell two minutes past the hour but it doesn't have to be specifically within 57 minutes so let's go ahead and say Please rebuild this function you built earlier, built earlier to allow the buying and selling any time within the last three minutes of the hour instead of just at 57. Do the same for closing the trade any time in the first two minutes of the new hour except exactly at the top of the hour and continue to skip 4, 12, and 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and paste in that function that it built. So it built this earlier in an earlier segment. You can modify the function to allow buying and selling within the last three minutes of the hour and closing of the trade within the first two minutes of the hour using the following code. Okay, so while true, current time is current time. Perfect. If current time is in if current time if current hour in 4 12 or 20 we're gonna skip else if 57 current minute or up to 60 I should probably do 59 huh and current second does not equal zero then we can buy ETH okay this is interesting so we actually don't want to be in the three hour either. So like this is four, but the funding rate on Femex is at four. So we actually want to skip if it's 357. So we should actually skip this here. Let's go say this. Let's grab all of this because this information is going to be good for our bot. Let's go ahead and copy. I'm going to call this bot. So I'm just not I'm not going to use all of the code, but let's say bot def bot. Paste that in there. If current time current hour is in 3 because we actually want it to be 19. Let's print this, print F, current hour, current minute, current time. I wanna see what this looks like and make sure it matches up. And then let's paste it in there. And the reason I want 311.19 is because I actually have four, 12 and 20 is when the funding rate is on Femex. As you can see here, oh my goodness, it changed. Does it change? Nine now. One seventeen nine. One seventeen nine. Okay, so maybe this change. Now it's sixteen eight. So how did? How does that, it changes day to day. So you can see it's 16.80 here, the funding rates, 
9, 1, 17. So it changes. That is tricky. Okay, we need to ask ChatGPT how to do that then. Using CCXT and Femex, how do we get the time? Uh, please build me. Please build a function that gets the next funding rate time. And I think it already built us a function here to get funding rate for Femex and add it to the function and add it to the function you built earlier that I'm pasting below. So to get the next funding rate time, you can modify the get funding rate function like this. So we pass the Femix in the symbol, funding rate data symbol, and then we get the funding rate and the next funding time. But it didn't show that earlier, honestly. So I think this isn't gonna work, but we'll see. Symbol equals ETH USD, that's wrong, but. Let's go ahead and try this out. Delete that, pass in Femex, pass in symbol. We already got that up there. What is this? Where's the symbol? The symbol is this. Okay, that'll get us BTC, that's fine. Okay, let's time.sleep here. Next funding time, it doesn't show that. So you can see here, next funding rate, next funding timestamp. That's insane. Here's, let's go ahead and say this. This is the JSON. And you can see that it does it include the next funding time? I apologize for the confusion. It seems that the CXT library does not provide the next funding time directly for Phoenix. In this case, we can calculate the next funding time based on the UTC, current UTC time. Phoenix funding rates occur every eight hours, zero, eight, and 16. But it's not true because look at this. It is is nine. Let's see if that changes for. No, it's nine zero nine sixteen. That's very very weird. Let's say use these uh, instead of the CCXT. Try using the Femex API in order to get the funding rate time. Instead of CCXT. Let's go ahead and stop this. Boom, boom. Paste that in. To obtain the next funding time using the Femex API directly, we can use a request library. Okay, hopefully this works. GitHub.femex API docs provides an endpoint for fetching the products, and then you'll need a request library in order to get it. So pip install request. Import request from date time, get funding rate. Okay, Femex API key symbol. Do we need an API key for it? get funding rate, funding response, funding rate equals none, symbol not found, funding rate equals funding rate, ER. Now this is a long, long function, huh? 
I'm just going to copy all this code and we'll try to run it. Okay, let's paste it in here, right above it. Okay, your API key, um, this is the key. Let's paste it in here. It's pretty fascinating though, right? Because it does it all for us. Let's hit time dot sleep bunch there. And this will pass it in time though, but what? Import date time. Time delta shows an error. I apologize for the oversight. It seems I forgot to import time delta from date time. How do you forget things? <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Can't be forgetting things, chat, chat. Okay, so this should work now. And let's see, we pass in the API key and the symbol. The symbol is up here as well. I'm gonna just delete that for now then. Let's run it. Gulp. Okay, so that's not iterable. 65 is the line. So let's print response JSON. And I'm gonna say I get this error. I get this error. Here is a sample of the response JSON. So I'm just giving it as much feedback as possible because then it can see what's going on. Invalid argument. So it looks like we don't get a response. My apologies for the confusion. It appears the API is returning an error. In this case, we need to handle the error properly and make sure the result field exists in response. So it's the same thing, response.json. Okay, well now it's not really working. Let's go ahead and see if we can get the Femix API. Femix API. API here, generic API. Cancel active list, get positions, orders, exchange. So invalid argument. So what argument did we pass in here? Response.json, headers equals headers, API key. Did I pass in the correct symbol? Symbol UBTC USD. Let's try just ETH USD. Because maybe that is the error. Invalid argument still, okay. So I don't use the Femix API, to be honest. I use CCXT for the most part. This little example I gave you earlier, <laughs> it, I don't think you should have longed here, but if I, the example was if you were to long here because of the emotion, this is a better long, but still would have got rocked. But I probably, my bot probably wouldn't have entered there. So that's the good thing. Okay, so how can we go about getting the funding rate? Let's say try to scrape this data. 
build something to scrape the funding rate time from this website because this is tricky it changed on me so let's see what it can build you can use request and beautiful soup beautiful soup miss it miss it miss it I miss beautiful soup first install beautiful soup 4 I think we have that installed but let's check it out from BS4 BS4 import beautiful soup and then let's try this new funding rate from the website let's delete all of this piece I just love coding with AI because I'm just I can be like ultimately lazy and be the ultimate lazy mofo and I just go back and forth don't really have to think too much okay so we go in there get funding history we get the URL we do the parser thing we find div count next funding time not found or it is found then it's right here and let's go ahead and check it out see if it works and if not we'll just tell ChatGPT to fix it please <laughs> Oh, so it takes a little bit of time. Next funding time not found. Why, buddy? Why? If funding time soup next funding time for some reason it outputs when I see on the website on the website that there is a funding time so the beautiful soup I don't use beautiful soup too much but I've definitely used it I apologize I don't want to use JavaScript is loading the funding that oh dynamically using JavaScript script so we have to use selenium selenium to interact with the JavaScript so let's make sure we have that import I guess I can just pip install it just in case no I, I think I have it but let's just do it uh, terminal new terminal requirement already nope I didn't have it cool 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 so get the next funding right let's try it come on buddy you got this This is cool though because like I like using different things. Different packages because every time ChatGPT gives me a new package, like I learn it a little bit. And that's one of the best my favorite parts of ChatGPT is that it just like teaches you stuff. Okay, we're just gonna pretend like there's no errors there. Come on, baby. Come on. You got this. Scrape, scrape. Scrape, scrape. Scrape, scrape. Come on, baby. Scrape, scrape. Scrape, scrape. You got this. This takes forever. Scrape, scrape. Come on. Oh, what is going on? Oh, it opens it up. Interesting. Okay, well, let's just let it open. I don't know what's going on here. Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. Sheesh. This is interesting. I'm not touching anything here. Let's let this do its thing. Is it scraping right now? Oh, there it goes. It closed it. Is it done? <laughs> now what I'm going to give it some more time give it some more time maybe it's still working I do want to remind you to enter that giveaway it's 500 
I'm giving away 500 on April 4th. And um, you can enter it by essentially just subscribing and commenting. And then you get access to that giveaway. And that giveaway is for 500 bucks. I'm going to send it USDC on April 4th. So just, you know, follow me on Twitter or something to to see when that is given away. Okay, this is taking too long for me. So Oh, error occurred. <laughs> it's right here. Let's go ahead and say we got this error. I apologize for the confusion. The error you incurred may be due to one of the following reasons. The web driver for your browser is not properly set up or the path is incorrect. Your browser version and the web driver version are not compatible. Sheesh. Please double check that you have downloaded the correct web driver for your browser. There's gotta be a better way to do this. I think we need to rethink this problem and figure out how to get connected to the API on Phoenix and then maybe I can just read through these docs here, but this is the problem I'm trying to figure out. This changed to nine, nine, one and 17. When I was doing research on this, it was this, it was eight, 16 and this, zero. So if that changes, that is tricky because it's not like there was a, uh, wait, Was it daylight savings time? So now it changes? So one nine, when did it change? 314, 313, 312. Okay, it changed on 312. It changed on 312 from, from this date to the other date. So maybe that was daylight savings time. So let's Google it. Let's ask ChatGPT. When was daylight savings time in March 2023? Can it even do that? Because it's not trained on that. In the United States, daylight savings time in March 23. Aha, okay. So this actually just answered our problem. And now we know because this changed on the 12th. So now it's one nine. One nine. 17. Okay, so let's put that in our notes because this is super important for this bot we're building. It's actually skip one, one, nine, and 17. That's weird. So 1700 hours, 1700 hours, 100 hours, and 900 hours. I think that's how it says. So we want to skip those. So in that case, Let's delete all this. We don't need it anymore. We figured it out. Delete that. So in this case, we want to skip those time periods. So in order to do that, we're going to go down here to our bot and say, what was it? 117 and 19? Sheesh, I have no memory these days. 19 and 17. 1, 9, and 17. So this would be 0, this would be 8, and this would be 16. Because we're trying to skip, trying to skip 1, 9, and 17. So if the current hour is below, then those numbers are coming up, then those numbers are coming, right? Because if it's the hour right now is zero, that means the next hour is gonna be one. If the hour is eight, then the next hour is gonna be nine. 
So I want to run this now and see what the current time is. Next funding time, line 67. Oh, I didn't fix that, sorry. Uh oh, I didn't mean to do that, sheesh. Get funding time, get funding rate, next funding time, next funding rate, print, next funding time. We don't need the time anymore because we figured that out ourselves. Delete all that and import requests. We're good here, good here. Let's run it again. I just want to see what the current time is. And then I want to match it. So the current current hour is 17, current minute is 46, and current second is 13. So let's make sure that's true. And how do we make sure that's true? Let's look at this exchange here. It's 17, 46, 13, and that's UTC. So let's just make that note here. UTC. And now we know here that this is the current hour because look at this here on trading view 1746 and this says 1746.54 so that's perfect so we are golden on the time and now we can skip the times that we have to pay that's pretty amazing right because that's free alpha like everybody else is paying paying funding fees and we're not gonna I mean, you can build this into all types of different algorithms, however you choose. If this was a little too advanced for you or you want all the code and all that good stuff, access that inside the bootcamp. There's a link for that below. You also get access to our Discord, chat with me, all that good stuff. And then also that giveaway. If you can't afford the, the bootcamp, I'm giving away a couple entries to it plus $500 USDC. USDC going to one person, 500 bucks, comment and subscribe in order to join that. And other than that, I will catch you in the next video.